So what have we been up to? Well, I've been making this very compact PCB. It's got an ESP32 S3 Mini. Now we've got a battery connection and we've got a USB-C connection. So this IC here, that's the battery charge controller. This one here is the ESD protection chip. This chip here is the power switch. So I've moved away from the fairly classic MOSFET plus diode and I've started using this IC. I quite like it. The reason I really like it is because um, you can basically put a lot of capacitance on the other side of it. So it has a slew rate limiter circuit. That means when it's powered up, it seems like it's not got much capacitance to the USB-C connector, but you can put a lot of capacitance on the other side. So it's quite handy. And we also got this um, RGB LED. Now this really tiny IC here is the voltage regulator. It is absolutely microscopic, pretty amazing. So this is a single key keyboard. Now I've designed it to take two different types of Cherry switches. So this red one is a low profile version and this blue one is a standard height one. Um, so unfortunately, or somewhat annoyingly, these have quite different footprints. So the red one has this very large kind of thing that goes through the PCB. Blue one has this quite small um, bit of plastic. Um, but I have managed to get a footprint that works for both. So I've got a blue version and I have a red version. Now this is my first um, experiment with um, mechanical keyboards and I have discovered all about stabilization. So if, let's have a look at the, the red one first, the low profile. So if we put the keycap onto this, it works quite nicely when you push in the middle. If you push either side, it's really not very good. It's uh, not very stable. And if we try it on the blue one, you can see we have the same problem. So let's, um, let's connect this. So it's less bad, but it's still not very nice to use. It's a bit wobbly. But what you can do is you add on these stabilizers. So these, um, these black bits are stabilizers. They clip through the PCB and this metal rod connects them. So when you move one, the other one moves. So if we take our keycap and stick it onto this. So now when I push on one side, the whole button goes down. So there's no more wobbliness. It's actually quite a nice movement. So it works quite well. Unfortunately, these stabilizers don't quite match up to the red button. They're just too tall. Now, I've looked around to try and find stabilizers for red versions, but um, I can't seem to find any. So any ideas, please put them in the comments. Now, obviously, it's just a plain white button. That's pretty boring. So what I've done, I've had these custom buttons made. So we now have our Vibe It button. So I'm going to do a bit of Vibe coding. So let's give it a go. We'll Vibe code up the software for our Vibe button and see if it works. So before we get down to some Vibe coding, I just want to do a quick shout out to PCBWay who manufactured these PCBs and did the SMD assembly. As always, it's a fantastic job. Check out our link to them in the description. Get your own PCBs made. Why not? So what is Vibe coding? What are we even talking about? Well, it's the new way of coding where you don't even look at the code. You just let the AI do it. So what I've done here is I've set up a platform IO project. We have the out of the box main function and I've added in this header file that defines all of our GPIO pins. Now you might be saying, surely you're cheating. Haven't you just written a bunch of code in this hardware header file? Well, actually, no, I used an AI to write it for me. So I tried a few different ones. Here's ChatGPT's attempt. So I gave it the netlist and the bomb and it generated this header file. It's actually pretty good. So it's worked out the RGB LED and it's active low. It's got the boot key and it's got our key press. So our GPIO pin is 33 is connected to the cherry key. Now the only thing it did that was quite weird is this enable pin. It made up this GPIO number. So I had to go with Claude instead. So here's Claude's attempt. It's also actually really good. So it's worked out that we need internal pull-ups. It's worked out that the charging pins are active low. It's got the RGB pins. It's got the how to turn the LED on. It's got our button key and our boot key. Um, so that's pretty good as well. It's even written us some setup functions and some helper functions. But in the end, I chose to go with um, Gemini's approach. So it's given me this nice header file. And I thought I'd use this one. It's quite clean. It's quite simple. 
there's not too much code in here. It's just the GPIO pins and the mappings. So we've gone with that one. So let's actually try and make something work. So what I'm going to do is I'll add in the main file to our context and then we'll just tell the AI what we want to do. So I want to make a USB keyboard. Uh, so we'll say when the key is pressed, I want to send command plus enter. So command enter is the key combination that actually lets us do the vibe coding. So let's send this off and see what the agent does. So it's going off to think. Okay, so what it's doing, it knows we're using platform IO. It's gonna have a look at the platform IO.ini file and see what it needs to do. So it's worked out, we've got an ESP32 S3 and it's saying, oh, that's got native USB HID support. I'll help you create a USB keyboard that sends command enter when your key switch is pressed. So let me update your project to implement the functionality. So it's gone off, it's fixing a few things. It doesn't need this, uh, it added this library and then decided actually I don't need it, you've got native support. So now it's off updating the main.cpp. So I'm not even gonna look at the code it writes, I'm just gonna accept everything. So let's accept that. Okay, let's just accept everything. Okay, so it says it's done. So now I'm gonna check to make sure it actually compiles. So let's see if it actually does compile. Hopefully it will. All right, successful compilation. So there we go, it tells us what it's done. So your USB keyboard features, command enter shortcut, press your key to send command enter. Got visual feedback, a blue LED lights up briefly when you press the key. It's got debouncing and it's got a status indicator. So the green LED flashes briefly on startup to show the device is ready. So let's flash it and see what happens. Okay, so our device is all flashed. I have this keyboard tester here. So let's hit the reset button. Oh, we get the nice green flash to show we're initialized. Let's see if the keyboard actually works. So this keyboard tester, I can just type. But now if I hit our button, we get command enter being pushed. So that's pretty cool. And you can see we get the little blue LED flashing when we push the button. So that's quite cool. What I can see though, is it's only momentarily pushing command enter. So let's fix that. What we want to happen is when the key is pressed, command plus enter should be sent and held. Only release the keys when the, when the key is released. See what happens. Okay, so it's gonna give us a more natural keyboard experience. Now what's quite cool is because our button is semi-working, we should be able to just hit accept using our Vibit button. So let's try it. Vibit, and it works. So it's gonna check it actually compiles. So we use our Vibit button again, all compiles. Let's flash it to our device. So what have we changed? When you press the key, command enter is sent and held down. While you're holding the key, the keys remain pressed. And when you release the key, command enter is released. And the blue LED should stay on while you're holding the key down. So let's give that a go. Let's head over to our keyboard tester. Uh, let's just clear the state. And now let's do the Vibit button. So there we go, that's working. You can see the blue LED stays on and command enter remains pressed when we press. So that's pretty cool, not bad at all. So we're not really taking advantage of our RGB LED. It'd be quite nice to have that showing the charging status of the battery. So let's tell it, um, let's use the RGB LED to show charging status. Let's have red for charging and green for fully charged. Keep the blue LED or the key press indicator. So let's see how it handles this. So you can see it knows we've got the charging pins from our hardware definition. So it's going off and modifying the code. Okay, let's use our Vibit button to accept everything. All compiles, let's flash the firmware. So I can see we still have our blue functionality but I don't see any LEDs for the red and the green. So let's unplug, plug back in. Ah, there we go. So we have a red for charging. So we have our blue LED. Let's leave that charging up and see if it eventually changes green. But meanwhile, we could add some more functionality. So one thing we could do is we could add Bluetooth support. So I'd quite like to have Bluetooth support as well as USB. What are my options? Okay, so it's saying 
The ESP32 S3, excellent Bluetooth support, got several options. Let's send it off and it will do a bit of searching to find out what the best way of doing is. Okay, it's come back with a lot of research, so we have multiple options. Um, I think I want USB and BLE simultaneously. Um, it has picked up this library. Now I believe this library is actually not that well maintained and we do have out of the box BLE functionality on the ESP32. So what I'm going to say is I want um, dual mode but avoid any additional libraries. Use the built. So let's tell it to give us dual mode but use the built-in BLE functionality. I don't want to pollute my thing with too many libraries so let's see what it makes of that. Okay so it's going to use the built-in BLE functionality so hopefully we should have a dual device now, one that does both USB and Bluetooth low energy. Let's see if this actually works. Let's see if it actually compiles. It's written a lot of code. Let's see what happens. Ooh, oh dear. Compilation errors. Let's see if it can fix itself. Okay, so it's trying to fix itself. Let's see if it succeeded. Let's run the command. So far so good, it's linking. I do believe it's actually built. So let's flash this and see what happens. So let's check the USB keyboard still works. So that's still working. Now let's bring up our system settings. So let's see if our system settings show any keyboards. Now I'm not seeing anything obvious here. Searching for devices. Let's try um, switching off and on again. Still searching, nothing yet. Uh, do we have any instructions? Has it told us anything to do? Da, 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 da. So we've uploaded. So I don't think it's pairing. So plug into the computer USB-C cable, mechanizes keyboard, works instantly, no pairing required. required. Um, we're not seeing any Bluetooth devices showing up though. I don't see any nearby devices. So let's tell it. So it's going off to check its implementation. Let's see if it can make it work. Okay, so it's made some changes. Let's do the upload. All right then, let's have a look. Oh, Bluetooth device, Vibetastic keyboard. Let us connect. Come on, are you connecting? I think we're connected. Let's see. Well, I've got it plugged into USB right now, so let's disconnect our USB connection. I've got a battery connected. Is it going to work? Oh, it doesn't work. What a shame. So let's see. Is it actually connecting? I don't know if it is. Yeah, it's not connecting. Let's see if it can troubleshoot it. Okay, so it's doing some more stuff. Let's, um, let's run this, see what happens. Accept everything. So it all compiles. Let's flash the device and see if we finally get something that works. Okay, so we're flashed. I'm going to try a complete power cycle just to check. So we're on. Let's have a look. See if it shows up. Not seeing anything obvious. Well, that's not very promising, is it? We're not seeing any Bluetooth devices nearby. So we're not having much joy with the current code, but let's give it a suggestion. Why don't we give it a library that I know definitely works? Why don't you try this library? Here's some sample code. Okay, let's send it off to do that. I'm determined this is going to work. Okay, so it's adding the library. Now it's going to rewrite our code and hopefully our new code will work. Fortunately, our USB keyboard is still working, so I can use my Vibe key quite nicely. So let's see if this actually works. Let's flash the firmware. Okay, so we're all flashed. Hit the reset button. Fingers crossed. Oh, Bluetooth device. Let's connect. Come on. Oh, oh, we're connected. We're connected. Let's check the old um, keyboard tester. Where's my keyboard tester gone? I've got so many windows open. Ah, key test. So that's with the USB connected. Let's disconnect our USB and see if our Bluetooth works. It works. We vibe coded our USB and Bluetooth key. Fantastic. It actually worked quite well. A few um, missteps in the Bluetooth setup, 
And I have noticed the LED, if I plug this back in, we should be seeing a red LED when it's charging. So let's just make sure that's working. Check that the charging and fully charged indicator is working. Flashing red for charging, green for fully charged. Right. If this works, we will stop because I think we've got something quite successful. I'm pretty pleased with that. We've uh, vibed up a completely working um, bit of code that does a USB keyboard and it does a Bluetooth keyboard. I had to give it a few hints, so I had to tell it what library to use and give it some sample code, but I've not actually looked at any of the code it's generated and I've not had to debug any of it or fix any of it. So I'm pretty amazed by that. Um, so let's uh, use our Vibit key to apply all the changes. So I just accept that. Okay, let's make sure it builds. Okay, so that built. Oh, that's uh, we're running out of requests. I'm, I'm hitting it too hard. The AI is getting upset. Uh, but it built. So let's, um, oh, it's doing some more. It's adding some debugging for us. Uh, it might be useful. Don't know. There is one thing with the S3. Uh, when you're using USB, the serial thing doesn't work out of the box. But um, I think we'll, yeah, we'll leave it there. I could ask it to fix that. But uh, I'm going to flash the firmware and we'll see how well this works. So let's flash the firmware and we'll see if our LEDs actually show the right status. Okay, so let's reset. Okay, red flashing LED indicates battery charging. Um, let's check that the keyboard still works. Where's my keyboard tester gone? There we go, keyboard tester. Yep, so the keyboard tester still works. Let's unplug, make sure the USB, uh, the BLE connection works. Yes, BLE connection still works. Amazing. So I think we've got a pretty fully functional um, bit of kit here. So not bad. I'm pretty pleased with that. Not bad at all. So yeah, we vibe coded up a fantastic bit of kit. Thanks for watching. I will uh, see you in the next video.